Hey there guys, Corey again with the Android community. Today we're taking another look at the LG G2. And what we kind of wanted to do was give you a good rundown of the software, aside from just the hardware. Um, there's a lot of stuff that LG has done lately with some of their devices to really just kind of make them stand out uh, in a way they're almost like Samsung to the point where there's just so much uh, additional stuff added to their phone. So aside from that 5.2 inch display and Snapdragon 800 quad-core processor with 2 gigs of RAM and 35 gigs of storage and 13 megapixel you know, camera with optical image stabilization and those buttons on the back. They've done a bunch of just really cool stuff. And we want to kind of show you a few of them. Hopefully this isn't too long because there's a lot to get through. But one of them that's my favorite, oddly, is it's called Knock On. And a double tap on the screen will launch your, you know, turn your screen on. And then you're just ready to go. And then anywhere there's nothing on your screen, if you tap twice again, it turns it off. And that is partly because when it's sitting, you know, on a desk, you can't access the buttons because they're on the back, so a quick double tap kicks it on and you swipe and you're ready to rock. So that was one thing that, that was kind of neat, but it's, I don't know, I found myself using it a lot. I'm actually really enjoying the knock-on feature to the point where I kind of wish all phones had it. Uh, it's probably got a lot of those kind of, you know, power-saving features with the Snapdragon 800 where other phones might not be able to to do something like that without killing battery. But that was just one small one. They have a lot of other cool stuff. With Google Now here, when you slide from the bottom, as you can see, Google Now is there like always. But then we have their quick memo to quickly take notes and stuff like that and what have you. And then down below, their little voice mate, which is their Siri, S Voice, Google Now, whatever you want to call it. I think it just heard me. Searching for now, whatever you want on Google. Yep, it definitely heard me. And it's confused. So uh, we're going to go ahead and kill that. But uh, that's just uh, one of the things here. And then there's there's a lot that they've actually done aside from that. If you go into uh, settings here and go to the home screen settings, there's a lot you can do here. There's some themes. There's a lot of basic themes as well. And then another thing, you go into the wallpapers. And the swipe effect is kind of cool. This uh, is when you're swiping through your home screens. And it'll kind of give you a preview of each one as you go. Carousel is kind of cool. Layer is kind of sweet. Domino's a little excessive if you really want to go crazy, but I'm just going to stick with accordion or actually panorama, that's fun. And then uh, home screen looping, stuff like that, so when you get to the end, it'll loop back to the next and portrait only and a few things like that. So that's nothing too new. When you pull down from the uh, top, the notification bar, you have all your usual stuff. The quick remote is not extremely new. We saw that on a couple of other devices, but it's one of the best remotes I've used because it does have an infrared sensor up top. The uh, the quick remote is is extremely easy just to tap open with that and then just go from there. Um, and it's just a little thing where you can quickly turn the volume up and down or what have you. Samsung's uh, Galaxy S4, I'm, I, I much prefer the LG version, uh, to be honest. And then a couple other things in here. All this is obviously customizable. We do have a Wi-Fi toggle. Awesome. Uh, that's kind of a big deal for a lot of people to turn a Wi-Fi on and off. Verizon has kind of been a pain lately and they've killed that feature and there's not a Wi-Fi toggle on like the S4 and a few other devices. Nothing to slide over, screen timeout, all that stuff again, and you can edit all of those as much as you'd like to make those completely custom. There's a lot of those features that we saw in Sound Engine Mod and custom ROMs and what have you, and it's all here for you already. So uh, wireless storage is another thing. If you turn on wireless storage, you can actually uh, get a whole like sharing feature where you can share your wireless you know, to from the phone to your computer. We couldn't really get it to work uh, here very well. And then the, the Q-Slide is also new. Q-Slide is kind of another, there's a lot of sliding going on. There's Q-Slide, there's a, a sliding feature for multitasking. There's a lot of stuff to multitask with the G2. I mean, you have a 5.2 inch screen and a quad core processor with two gigs of RAM, might as well. So go ahead and open, uh, let's see, something like uh, Rich Note, take a quick note. And here it goes. QSight helps you multitask easily while viewing an app in small windows. It's multi-window mode. Come on. So uh, here it is. You can slide it around wherever you want. Get rid of that keyboard. Slide it around wherever you want. Make it smaller or, or bigger, you know, whatever you'd like. And you go back in there again. Go to something like the cal calculator or a file manager. And the file manager, you can go ahead and move down as well. Just take a note as you do it. A couple things like that. Not everything works with it, but it works okay. And then, of course, you can kind of... You can make them transparent if you don't want it to be very noticeable in, in the way. And then again, if you'd like, you can go ahead and tap and go full screen. So that's Q slide. There's tons of stuff they do there. And then, of course, that's also completely customizable. You can edit all of that. Now, another thing here, 
um, is their, their other little sliding feature. And uh, if you go ahead and open something like, uh, you know, NFL Mobile, and it, you have to do three fingers, which is kind of weird. It's, it's, I'm not a fan. You slide with three fingers, and it instantly saves it over to the side, and then it says up top, App Save, and you pull this down, slide, slide aside. So with slide aside, you can save up to three apps for like a quick multitask. So if you go into something like the gallery, and uh, go ahead and do the same thing, fly, slide that aside, and then let's do one more. Let's go find something goofy here. I don't like Google Music. I don't think I've used Google Music much on this phone. Go ahead and slide that aside as well. And now you're back to kind of where you were. And now the same three slide from the, uh, the, the left will show you all three of the apps. And uh, you can go ahead and, and go into which one you want and you can kill them and what have you. So it's kind of a cool feature in a way for multitasking. But, you know, it's there's a lot of multitasking already. You push and hold home for the standard multitasking we're all familiar with with Android 4.1, you know, Jelly Bean and beyond, whatever have you. You can go ahead and clear all those. So the Q slide it's it's kind of cool, but it's you know, it's a nice feature. I don't know if I'm gonna use it too much, but it is nice that they included it. So um that was just one other thing. Let's see what else we have here. There's a lot of stuff going on with the uh, the G2. You can go ahead and pinch with your fingers and arrange all the screens the way you'd like. That's Probably not extremely new. We've seen that a few times with other devices. Let's see what else here. And then another thing we wanted to kind of show you is there's tons of stuff in settings. There's tons of customization. A lot of this is kind of new, but a lot of it is not. And we've seen before from LG. Like, for example, if you go into display, you have your brightness and screen rotate or screen off effect and the font and all that stuff and smart video stuff so where it use your eye to detect if you're looking at the screen or not for video and what have you. And then the uh, front touch buttons. This was actually convenient. You can completely change the front touch buttons. I like the back button being over here personally. And you can just instantly change those to all kinds of crazy things. And that button even brings down the notification bar. But I just like to stick to that. Then you can even change the colors of them. If you want to get goofy, you can make it pink. I'm going to go ahead and pass on that. White gradient, white. Um, whatever you'd like, or just the black gradient. And then, of course, you can also make it transparent. Because you can see it's got a color right now. And then when you go into something like this, it goes transparent to kind of fit your home screen. And let's see here. Go ahead and go back into settings. And check this out. They have a lot of uh, sound settings, a lot of different stuff in there with uh, ringtones and incoming call vibrations. And the notification sound is an awful that it comes on default, at least from Verizon. <laughs> but uh, you can change the feedback, you can get voice notifications, change the vibration, and you can get rid of the little notification LED on the top. And uh, let's see here. And then of course, you know, the lock screen you can completely customize. That's nothing extremely new. You can get rid of the weather effect, add the weather effect, and all that. There's one-handed operations, where the lock screen is kind of easier. You know, if you have a hard time with that 5.2 inch screen, you can put the keyboard off to the left or to the right to kind of make things easier. Uh, that's not extremely new. Their battery manager is completely different than what we've seen lately. Uh, it's kind of a disaster. You can add the percentage up top if you'd like. And then set the battery saver setting. I have that turned off. And I've got like a lot of battery life here. I mean, I've had it for a few days here. Like for example, 49 hours. Like this phone, if you just kind of like leave it around and, and you use it somewhat throughout the day, is going to last you easily like 30, 48 hours. Well, that's a big difference. But I mean... This is one of the best LG devices in terms of battery life I've ever used. A lot of their phones, even with big batteries, still seem to die in a day, even with all those power-saving features. A lot of this might be the Snapdragon 800 processor, but a 3,000 milliamp hour battery in this G2, it lasts forever. It's going to be a pretty good phone as far as battery life. Hopefully, some of those large battery-saving features make it into the uh, Nexus 5, which is rumored to be by LG, because this phone really does. I mean, I... I used it excessively the first day I got it, and it lasted almost 30, like 33 hours, I believe, with heavy, heavy usage. So an entire day and well into the next. And uh, casual light users are going to, it's going to be a, a good two-day experience, which is nice. And then, of course, here, it's your storage and battery. There's a guest mode, which is uh, not extremely no, new, but where you can make a guest mode so, you know, your users can't go in and mess with all your apps and do anything like that. And then your usual stuff, language, keyboard stuff, and all your what have you, and accessories and stuff like that. The quick window case, which you guys have seen a little bit of, 
in here you can just kind of uh, go through and activate the quick window case which is kind of a little window when you flop the case to cover the screen it will uh, kind of protect yet show you some things like uh, you know a clock or weather alerts or notifications or what have you so a couple of little things here just neat little uh, add-ons from LG the knock on to uh, turn the phone on and off one of my favorites it's just really nice and there's that weather effect we were talking about and of course the lock screen notifications or not lock screen notifications but the the lock screen features where you can instantly kind of launch a camera or or whatever else you'd like launch Google it's all there and they have their own uh, little music widget a couple other things so that's just a look here at the LG G2 this is the Verizon model but uh, for the most part most of the G2's are about the same but we just kind of wanted to show you a, a list of a bunch of those features because they have a lot of them and a lot of them are customizations and stuff like that that kind of are things we haven't seen a lot from you know a stock phone that just kind of really makes makes it nice that you can kind of just customize it completely and just get all sorts of crazy you really want to that's just awful let's go back to the pink see it disappears and goes to that see-through but anything else you're open and doing you'll have kind of the colors if you really want but that was a look here I gotta really quickly fix that I just can't handle that kind of ridiculousness go with black this time so there it was the LG G2 again this is the Verizon model and uh, very similar features throughout most of the other G2's on the at and and what have you of course with uh, you know, Verizon the buttons are different they're a little smaller I'm not quite a fan of the smaller design compared to the original LG G2 the camera situation is a little different and this does have built-in wireless charging it's a little bigger around the sides maybe a tiny bit fatter but the LG G2 from Verizon does have wireless charging and then of course some of these uh, ports on the bottom are different the speakers they're actually not stereo but there's just three little holes for the speakers micro USB headphone jack what have you there's no buttons anywhere on the device except over here there is an L LTE SIM slot and that is about it but there it is LG G2 thanks for watching guys plenty of cool stuff with this phone check it out go get one it's available now